In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add your first enemy to our space shooter game. So as you can see here, we've got some red ships falling from the sky, which are the enemy. If they hit us, we hear this um, weird noise just to indicate that we have been collected by the enemy. Um, so we can also head over and shoot bullets at the enemy. When the ball hits them, obviously they disappear. And you hear a little sound as well, just to indicate that you have killed off the enemy. Okay, so we will be adding... Um, lives and a score panel to this game in future tutorials but for now we just want to focus on getting this red spaceship falling from the sky constantly throughout our game okay so i'm going to stop that there i'm going to head over to um, scratch on my desktop here you can use the online version if you prefer and you need to have open your game that you created in our previous video where we had our spaceship flying and shooting bullets that's as far as we've got so far so in this video we're going to add that first enemy to our game. And to do that, you'll need to load up the sprites of the red spaceship. So head down to your sprites panel here and go to the upload sprite option. Now, if you're in my class, I'll give you access to this sprite. It's this one here. Although if you are watching on YouTube, just make sure you click the link in the video description below and you'll be able to access this um, file for free. Okay, so once you bring it in, it comes out quite big. So we're going to change his size in the sprite properties here from about 100% to 20%. And that will be a much better size to work with. And we're going to add some code now to our game to get this guy falling from the sky. So the first thing I want to happen, I want this guy to basically disappear off my page for the first few seconds of the game. When I run my game, I want the user just to get used to the controls of moving left and right. So we won't bring our red guy into the game for the first, say, three seconds. Okay, that should be enough time just for the user to get a feel for the left and right controls of their spaceship. After then, let's bring in our first enemy. Okay, so we're going to go over to our events tab and bring out when the green flag is clicked, like usual. So it just means when the game starts. What do we want this red ship to do? Well, the first thing, as I just said a moment ago, we want it to hide. So we want it to disappear off the page for a moment. Okay, so when we press the green flag, the red ship disappears. And we're going to leave it off the page for three seconds. So bring in that code that says wait one second and change it to three seconds. Okay, after three seconds, what I want it to do is I want it to reappear again, but I want it to reappear as a clone. Because we're going to be sending multiple red ships down our page throughout the game, instead of using just that original one ship to fly down the page, we're going to clone it. So each time it falls down the page, it's going to be a new clone of this red ship. So scroll down in your control tab there until you see create clone of myself. Okay, now I want this to keep occurring throughout the game. So I'm going to wrap that little section of code up in a forever loop. So just the orange bits need to be wrapped up there. Okay, so we wait three seconds, create a clone. Wait three seconds, create a clone. And we're going to be creating clones every three seconds in our game to fall down the page. Okay, so that's the first part of our code. Next thing we need to do is actually get it moving down the page. So I'm going to bring out a chunk of code that says when I start as a clone. So now we're coding up the clones that are going to be falling down the page. First thing I want it to do is I want it to become visible so we can actually see the clone. Okay, let's... Just see if that does anything. I just want to see after three seconds if it appears over here or not. Yeah, there it is. So you saw that we had a three second buffer and then our first clone of the red ship appears. Okay, once it appears, I don't want it to start in the middle of the screen. I want it to start just above the top of my screen so it has room to fall down the page. So I'm going to go to my motion here and bring out the code that says go to X and Y. And for the x-axis, that's the one that runs left to right on our page, I don't want it to be the same every time. I want it to randomly pick a position to start at the top of the page. So in the operators here, you can just drag out the block of code that says pick random. And instead of saying 1 to 10, we put in the coordinates minus 200 and 200. So it's going to pick a random position somewhere between about here and here. Not quite on the edges of our page because we don't want the ship to be half cut off when it falls down the page, um, but it's just near the edge of the pages and it can appear anywhere along that axis. Okay, the Y value though is going to be the same every time. It's going to be just above the top of the page there and that's going to be set to 180. Okay, so now when we press start, our 
ship will appear anywhere along at the x-axis just above the top of the page. Um, now what we're going to do then is make it fall down the page to make it look like it's flying towards us. Okay, and to do that we need to use our motion to change the y value. Don't snap it onto the code here yet because we're going to put a little bit of code um, together and then snap it on here. So we're going to change the y by if we say 10, it's going to go up the page. We actually have to go into the negatives here to make it come down the page. So I'm going to say minus 4. That's a pretty good speed for our ship to fall at. Okay, so by putting it in the negatives, it's going to fall down the page. And by putting 4, it's a reasonable speed to start with. Okay, you can play with that number and make it faster or slower, depending how you want your game to work. Okay, and we want that um, red guy. I don't know if this is actually going to fall. Let's just have a look. If we wait 3 seconds, it should appear at the top. There he is there. He's just not falling yet because we haven't wrapped it up in a forever loop. Okay, actually we're not going to use a forever loop for this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a loop, but it's going to be a different kind of loop. It's going to be this one here, the one that says repeat until. So we're going to repeat this code to have him falling down the screen until it hits the bottom of the screen. Once we hit the bottom of the screen, we want our enemy to basically just disappear off the page because there are going to be more clones appearing at the top of the page ready to fall down after it. Okay, so we just want our enemy to go from top to bottom and then delete. Simple as that. Okay, so all we need to do is we need to go to our operators here and we're going to choose the less than symbol. And in motion, we're going to grab the Y position. So we're looking at where this enemy ship is on the Y axis. We're going to watch it fall down the page. And if it's anything less than minus 180, that's the bottom of the page there. So that means if it's up in our game screen, then we keep falling down the page. But if we go further past that minus 180, which means we've hit the bottom of the page and we're going down further, then what we need to do is simply delete that clone. That means we've hit the bottom of the page. We want to delete ourselves. Okay, let's have a look and we'll see if that is working. So we wait three seconds and then the clone begins falling, hits the bottom of the page and it disappears. Okay, and that's just going to continue on basically forever while our game is running. These red guys are just going to keep falling down the page every three seconds. When they hit the bottom, they delete. Okay, so that's looking good. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to make it so that if our enemy hits the spaceship, we want to play a sound to show that we've been struck by the enemy. Okay, so we're going to bring out another chunk of code that says when I start as a clone. And it's just a simple if statement. So we're going to use the if then block of code. So if the enemy is touching the spaceship, then we play a sound. Okay, so go to sensing, grab touching mouse pointer and change the mouse pointer to spaceship. So that just says if the enemy is touching the spaceship, then what do we do? We want to play a sound. So we haven't loaded any sounds into this sprite yet. So let's go to our sounds tab up here and load in a sprite. Just choose a sound. There's one called lose that I want you to use. Okay, it's a big one. Have a listen. Each time we get hit by the enemy, we don't want to play that entire sound. It's too long. So what I'm going to do is just cut it down to size. I'm going to cut off that first bit there by highlighting it and pressing delete. I'm also going to cut off this end bit, delete that, and you should get a sound. Sounds a little bit depressing, I suppose, and that's kind of what you want to hear when you um, get struck by the enemy. So back in your code, where it says, if touching spaceship, what I want you to bring out this time is start sound lose. We're not going to use play sound lose until done like we usually do. We're just going to go with start sound lose. So that starts playing the sound that we've been hit. And we can do other stuff in the meantime as well. So what I want to do is go to the control section. I also want to delete the clone. So when our enemy hits the spaceship, the enemy is deleted off the screen. Okay, so there's two things happening there. Sound that we've been struck and the red enemy ship being deleted. Now if we put that in like so and run it, it won't work. Let me just get struck by an enemy ship and I'll show you what happens goes straight through us. And the reason being is we haven't wrapped it up in a forever loop. That line of code runs immediately when we press the green flag, okay, and that clone appears. Um, but after 
the computer reads it once, that's it. It forgets about that code and won't remember it. So that means the code's not going to work. But if we wrap it up in a forever loop, the computer will always be waiting, always listening out for when the enemy touches the spaceship. And when it does, it can run those two blocks of code inside of there. So the sound of losing, and it should delete the clone. So let's try that again. We'll see if it works. There we go. So that's a bit better. So we can get hit by the ship now, and we'll hear a sound to say we've been struck. The final thing I want to do is I want to be able to shoot a bullet at this ship. So let's bring out another block of code that says when I start as a clone. And this time we're going to do, I guess, something similar to what we've done over here. We need to work out if our bullet is touching the enemy ship. So let's do another if-then statement. And we know to wrap this up in a forever loop now, otherwise it won't work, so let's do that. Okay, so the if then is if we are touching the bullet. So change the mouse pointer there to the bullet. So if our enemy ship is touching the bullet, we're going to play a new sound. So let's go back to our sounds tab and we're going to play a new sound. So do a quick search. It's called Zoop. Sounds like this. Okay, so... We want to bring in that sound. Now we're going to choose the start sound zoop again. We're not going to do play sound. We're going to choose start sound. So other things can occur in the background while that sound is playing. So if the bullet and the enemy collide, we play this sound zoop, which is the sound of our uh, spaceship, red spaceship disappearing. And we're also going to delete the clone. So that red spaceship will be deleted as soon as it gets hit by a bullet. Uh, I think that is about it, so let's have a look. I don't think it's going to work fully, but we'll see what happens. Okay, it's working, but the only thing I want to fix on that is the bullet keeps flying past the spaceship after we've hit it. I'd prefer it if that bullet disappeared when it hit the spaceship. So we're going to have to go over to the bullet sprite to put in a little bit of code here uh, to do that. All you need to do is remember the bullet is a clone as well. So we're going to bring out when I start as a clone to do this bit of code. So when the bullet starts as a clone, so we're working on the bullet clone here. We need to work out if we're touching the red enemy. And if we are, we want to delete the bullet. So it's kind of similar code to what we just put in. So let's um, bring out our if then statement and our forever loop. Join them together. And we're going to work out if we're touching the enemy spaceship. So if we are touching the enemy spaceship, we want to oops, delete the clone of the bullet. Okay, just watch what happens here. It'll work partially. So the bullet, it works, disappears when it hits the spaceship, but now the spaceship isn't disappearing. Okay, oh, it does there though. What we need to do, all we need to do is just fix it by going to this wait one second and just above delete this clone, make it 0 0.01 seconds. Okay, so when the bullet hits the enemy, just for a split second there, it allows this code over here to run. Okay, so it plays the sound zoop and deletes the red um, ship and then after that split second, it deletes the clone of the bullet as well. A little bit confusing there, but this should work every time now. So let's have a quick test run. That looks good. So the bullet disappears with the red spaceship. Okay, so that's perfect. That's all we need to code up in this tutorial. In our next tutorial, we'll start to look at adding in a score panel. And we'll probably have a look at adding in some lives in future tutorials as well. So I will see you in those videos.